to the place where Louis dwells. After Holy Cross, Clarence Thomas was off to a very different world once again, Yale Law School. It was a chance to leave Pinpoint far behind, defy his grandfather's prophecy, and get positioned to make real money. We know what the reputation of Yale is. You got a network of folks in all walks of life in the legal community, and all you got to say is, man, I'm a Yale alum, and bam, you got a job. That was our perception. He had thought, well, you know what? I just go, go make me a bunch of money, maybe go to New York and be a lawyer. He and Kathy moved into married student housing. They made a connection with their neighbor. We were both in married student housing. He set up his study room in what should have been, you know, a joint storage room. His classmate, John Bolton, would become UN ambassador, Under Secretary of State, and National Security Advisor. And uh, we started talking and talked for the next two years, basically, and uh, that's where we got to know each other. Over time, Thomas would open up to Bolton. I don't think he was terribly happy at the law school. Look, people at Yale Law School, generically speaking, are a pretty arrogant group. Uh, they think that they're going to rule the world. For example, in the year ahead of us were Bill and Hillary Clinton. That was kind of the atmosphere. I don't think Clarence came with that in mind for himself. And I think it was kind of off-putting. There are other black students there, but again, the black students who are there, like, he doesn't feel they are like him. He's not part of the elite. They're, in his mind, privileged kids, you know, the sons and daughters of doctors and lawyers. So he feels, again, like the outcast. He believed that people assumed he was there as a, as a uh, beneficiary of affirmative action, and it grated on him. He has this feeling of, oh, I'm around these white students who he senses question his presence at Yale. How is it that you, not just you, Clarence Thomas, but you, all you black students are here? Is it because of merit or is it because of affirmative action? There was one law professor, Ralph Winter, who in a challenging way mentioned this. People don't think, you know, you deserve to be here, that kind of thing. And, Thomas doesn't take it as a challenge, he takes it as a slight. Rather than try to fit in, Thomas tried to stand out. He dressed in overalls and a T-shirt. It was kind of a uniform. But neither one of us was terribly rich, so I, I didn't wear overalls, but I understood what it meant for him. With Clarence Thomas, what you see is somebody who's isolating himself. And he's kind of saying, you know, I don't want to try to join you, maybe because he doesn't want to be rejected again. After three years of Yale Law School, graduation was nearing. But Clarence Thomas wasn't getting the offers he expected from prestigious law firms. He was saying that he wasn't getting the kind of offers that other students were getting. Um, and, um, and we couldn't understand it. We thought that, well, you know, you're at Yale, and if you're not getting offers, something, something's wrong, you know, because that's the whole purpose of going to those schools. Thomas would never forget the sting of those rejections. He said he would keep stacks of rejection letters he had gotten from law firms. Even when he was like a Supreme Court justice, he had these letters just to sort of remind him of those, again, this feeling of rejection by kind of the elite law firms. He had his Yale Law degree, and he had a 10-cent stamp stuck to it. You know, like a 10-cent price tag stuck to it. Because he's like, yeah, this is what it's worth, right? 10 cents, so I know more. He came to blame affirmative action for the rejection he felt. Now I knew what a law degree from Yale was worth when it bore the taint of racial preference. I was humiliated and desperate. 
He thought that his degree was devalued, that he didn't get the same kind of cachet out of the degree once he was looking for a job and trying to move in his career. He assumed that others were assuming that it's a Yale Law degree, but with an asterisk next to it. I disagree. I disagree totally. Orion Douglas had a strikingly similar academic journey to Clarence Thomas's. Scholarship to Holy Cross, law school, eventually becoming a judge. I ain't gonna blame affirmative action for not getting a job when you never was offered the job for 100 years before, okay? <laughs> the system was still there. The infrastructure for separation, discrimination was still there. It was still the segregated mindset of white America. 